My name is Lil Perfect. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. Growing up in Little Rock, Arkansas, man, is different if you're not from a little town. A lot of people from the South are from little towns, so you know what I'm saying? It's just, it, was, it was different because I grew up in Southwest Little Rock, Arkansas, which is like a little hood in Little Rock, and it's majority Mexican and black. So all of us had the same problems. Poverty, you know, everybody trying to make a way out. A lot of drugs, you know, a lot of, I seen a lot of stuff, man. I seen a lot of drugs. My dad was one of the biggest, like, you know what I'm saying, drug dealers back then. So I seen him get locked up back and forth, back and forth. So I was raised by my stepmom, not my real mom. So it was like a different household. It was different for me. I live in uh, Houston, Texas right now. The difference between Houston and Little Rock, Arkansas is Houston is way bigger, way more opportunities, a lot of different people, you know, a lot of different souls, and I've just met so many different people so far. Like, in Arkansas, not everybody the same, but kind of everybody the same, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of it's kind of like they put you in this normalized down there because it's such a small city and everybody had the same belief as as a different as the difference as a big city. Everybody just so much open, you know, different things, to different opportunities, just a different everything. When I moved from Little Rock to Houston, I was 20. Yeah, I was 20. But that's not my first move. My first move from um, Arkansas, I was 18 years old, and I moved from Arkansas to L.A. I stayed in L.A. for like a little bit under a year. Then I found out it wasn't for me. I moved back to Little Rock. Yeah, I went to I went to high school in Arkansas. I went to um, Magnet School. It's the top school in Arkansas. So when I went to the school, it was the most different school I went to because it was a Magnet School. We had different areas. We had drama, art, science. So first, that was like one of the biggest things I was exposed to. The second thing at that school I was exposed to was homosexuals. It was my first time seeing girls dressed like boys or boys dressed like girls because I was because at first I was just going to regular schools like I didn't go to magnet schools I was going to the regular hood schools everybody going to them it was normal you know what I'm saying for girls today boys and I was just exposed to so much different stuff at that school which made me the person I am today which helped me be myself in high school I was considered popular I was a viner I had over 1.7 million followers being in the 10th grade 11th grade uh Vine shut down towards kind of like my senior year, so it was like not as popping no more. But like in the earlier stages, hell yeah, I was popping. Everybody, you know what I'm saying, knew me in the school, all the teachers, everybody always knew that dang jazz is a little funny little comedian girl on Vine. So yeah, I was I was popping. It was it was real fun. It was a different experience for me because I never went to a bullying stage or none of that. So I never got to experience that. So when I hear people talk about that, I'd be like, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? You went through that? Like, that's crazy. Because all I got was love. In high school, I played some sports. I played softball. Uh, I played that ninth through 11th grade year. After 11th grade year, I was like, man, fuck that. I'm, I'm, I'm done with the sports. I'm going to stick on straight social media. This is, where, this, is where my, this is where my heart at. This is what I like. This is what I love. And I had just started just going heavy with it. My relationships in high school were all were all through the internet. I never, I never had, I never had someone I was talking to in person because back then I was scared to be myself. I was already gay. That's why I never had a boyfriend through high school. I never had a boyfriend through high school. My last boyfriend was eighth grade. That's the last time. I was like, man, I can't do it. It was, I don't know, I don't know if it was a conversation. I couldn't get started, but I tried having a boyfriend. I, I, I even know some guys that I used to like date like back in middle school and we laugh about it to this day. It's just all, it was just all fun, fun and jokes for me, but I tried it and I was like, man, I can't do it. I couldn't start the conversation with a guy. And then he'll always bug me next day at school. Like, why you didn't text me back? Man, I called you last night. And I was like, nigga, get away from me. And so when I always had that mentality, I was like, man, I know I'm not gonna be able to get through this. So ninth grade, that's when I just started talking to girls, but I would just talk to girls over the internet. You know, I wasn't talking to girls in my school or none of that. I still was going to slumber parties, having slumber parties at my house. My mom didn't know shit, didn't know nothing until I told them. Okay, so for my dad, he claimed he already knew. So we ain't really have a conversation about it. But like I said, I was raised by my stepmom, and she and she just came to me, you know. First of all, she found out. She the one who, moms know best. She the one who, you know, antenna it out. 
so you know I had a little I had a little shorty at my house for the summer this was like when I first came back to LA came back from LA to Little Rock I was like you know when I get back to Little Rock man I'm, I'm, I'm being myself I was like fuck all the bullshit fuck you know trying to cover it up fuck what family think I was like I'm, I'm gonna be myself so I started talking to this girl and I had this fat ass hickey on my neck. I'm talking about the hickey covered here to here. And I was like, man, when my stepmama come home, she gonna see this and she know that ain't no niggas in been in this house. She only done seen girls over here. And I know that she not only seen girls over here cause that's, that's the only thing I had over here. So, but most likely at that time she was thinking, oh, them just are home girls, you know what I'm saying? Cause she used to me having so many friends. Like I said, I was very social, very popular. So then um, she seen it. And I looked at her face, but I had company over. My stepmama, not the type to yell at us in front of company. It's like, you know, we're going we're gonna to handle that behind closed doors. So the next day, I remember receiving a long-ass text message. I mean, boy, it, it was long. And it, she was at work. I was at home. It was the summertime. So, you know, I, was, I seen it. But I remember looking at the text message. I didn't even read it. I didn't read shit she say. Because at that point, I was like, it's no, it's like, it's no turning back. You know what I'm saying? It's like... What you, whatever you say is not going to affect my mindset because I've been holding back for so long. You know what I'm saying? I've been holding me in for so long. And I was just at the point where I was like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? So I never read the message. And then she just kept texting me, kept texting me. And, you know, she was telling me she was crying every night because she was just trying to figure out where she went wrong. And I was like, you didn't go wrong. I was like, I've been having these thoughts since the damn sixth grade. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, it's just me. Like. I got nothing but boy cousins. <laughs> like, I grew up around all boys. I was like, I was telling her, like, it was destined to happen. Uh, I've been on, I've had my YouTube account, I think it's gonna say like since 2013, but I didn't start going heavy and taking it seriously until like the end of 2016. And that's when I got like my first viral, viral video. It had got like over a million views in like a fucking week. I went from like 80,000 subscribers to like over 100,000 in like shit, a few days after that video dropping. And it was a Smash or Pass challenge. I was the first person to start the Smash or Pass challenge, if nobody know that. But that's why that challenge is so damn big on YouTube. Uh, me and my cousin started that challenge and he gave me the idea. He was like, man, let's do a Smash or Pass on YouTube. And me, I wasn't even thinking it was going to get that many views. I was like, but let's do it, though. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm down. So then we just, you know, got a whole bunch of baddies. I like, you know, celebrities, Cardi B, all them, you know. We just did, like, smash or pass. And then we dropped another one after that. It got, like, two million views in a week, too. So we just started dropping, like, little series of smash and passes. And I'm seeing, like, hella people on YouTube doing it. I'm like, damn, everybody doing my idea. I was like, damn, that's, that's sweet right there. And, uh... Transitioning from Vine to YouTube was hard, man. Think about going from six seconds to five to ten minutes of content. But it's something I definitely got used to, and I have fun doing it every day. All right, so you know what I'm saying? At first on me, oh, no. At first on my YouTube channel, it was just me and my um, cousin and family. Like I said, I was living in Little Rock, Arkansas when I first started taking it serious. So I had my um, I had my cousin Mari on it. Me and him, we record like every single day. He was in college, so literally every day he'd get out of school like at 12. I'd be like, bro, come over, let's shoot a you know challenge video, or you know he'd come over and I just prank him, or we just do some crazy stuff. Also, I have my little cousins in on it. Like uh, they'll be. They they were like uh at that time they were like 11 12 got my I had my little four year old because everybody was helping me my stepmom she do videos with me everybody my dad so everybody always show show love and supporting me with doing videos and then how I transitioned into you know how I transitioned into doing couple videos and, and videos with my girl. I just moved to Houston that's where I met my girl you know she was working at Foot Locker and. That was the first girl actually that I ever walked up to in person. Any other time, I let the girls just slide in my DM. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying, bro. I don't never try. I'm not walking up to no girls. Cause first of all, I don't know if she gay, so I'm not finna just walk up to her. You know what I'm saying? Then she dissed me. So I, so I never walked up to no girl. This was the first girl I ever walked up to, and I just walked up to her, and I was just joking with her, being myself. Asked her what's a I asked her what's on Instagram. I thought she was trying to play me because y'all know everybody got an Instagram. She's like, nah, I ain't got no Instagram. I'm like, okay, she got a nigga. So I thought she was trying to hide that, but she actually didn't have an Instagram, so I asked her for a snap. And then I added her on snap, and then she snapped me first, and then we just took off from there. I realized I was getting big as hell on YouTube and just big in general when I couldn't do little shit no more. <laughs> like, um, go to the trampoline park. And it's hella, it's, it's to the point where you can't enjoy yourself. It's like, it's a picture here, or I go to Dave and Buster's. 
and on a Saturday, and I forget it's a Saturday. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going like, like let's go, you know, let's go have fun. And we go up here, and it's just crazy. It's like we shut down a spot, and they like, why the hell y'all didn't tell us y'all was coming? And we like, damn, we really forgot that. You know what I'm saying? We not normal people. We can't do that. And it just be crazy, man. Like I remember I went to a skate a skate place in on a Friday night, a skate rink at on a Friday night, and I really forgot. We went for my girlfriend birthday party. She was like, you know, just skating. And we went in there, man. I'm telling you, them kids ran from the back of the damn skate rink with skates on, running to the front. And they was they had to like the employees had to hold us back, like, why y'all didn't tell us y'all? I was like, I'm so sorry. So we just be going through a lot of crazy stuff, but it's all it's all love at the end of the day. I want to I wanna work with a lot of people, man. I look up to a lot of people in music. I just, I, I have a lot of people that I just find that's dope. Hell yeah, I know we're going to have a lot of features coming, a lot of collabs coming. Some people I want to work with is Lil Mozzie. That nigga is hard. He wanted to, he wanted young niggas that's out doing it right now. He dropping bangers, so I do respect him. Collaborations in the past, I've done a song with my boys, Armand and Trace, called She For Everybody. That got like seven plus million views on YouTube too. It was supposed to go up even more, but YouTube, they stopped it and they took us off the search. The search result, shit, I guess, cause it was like on some extra, I don't know what happened, man. We just got took off the search engine cause that bitch had seven million in two weeks. I don't know why I stopped. But they took us off the search result, maybe because it was a diss tour of somebody and they, you know, they kind of considered that picking or whatever, but they dissed us first. <laughs> uh, the type of music I do, it would be considered hip hop, urban. My favorite, if anybody know me, my favorite musicians is NBA, Youngboy, and G Herbo. Them my guys, I could listen to them all day. Every, every album, I could relate to so much pain and I could just hear the pain and hear the stories and the voice, I just know real. Yeah, I met, I met I Love Friday through management. They real dope, man. We made a dope ass song called Throw It Away. Y'all should go check it out. It's on YouTube. I've had braces for a little bit over a year now. I got them February of 2016. Man, these motherfuckers be hurting, bro, because I had gaps before. I had gaps all through here. And um, them, them, they closed now, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna a pretty smile. I'm gonna have a real pretty smile. But uh, yeah, man, I be going to get these tightened like once a month, bro. And I'm telling y'all, every time I go, it's like they put a thicker wire or they add a thicker chain or some shit. And it just be grasping the hell out of my teeth. But I know it's working because like my gaps closed within like five months. So it's just in the process of, you know, turning and getting everything straightened right now. One thing I can't wait to do when I get them off, I eat everything. I, I know I'm not supposed to be eating gum and, and chicken wings and all that if my dentist watching this, but I do. I'm sorry. I be eating everything. Popcorn, all the stuff y'all gave me on that no list, I be eating it because, man, it just be looking so good to me, and I just can't help myself. But one thing I can't wait to do, man, is get my grills back. I didn't have a top grill before I got these, but I had the bottom grill. I, I swear to God, when I get these taken off, I'm going straight, I'm going straight, straight to the jeweler. Y'all know I'm in H-Town. Advice on upcoming creators, artists, and anything, consistency. It don't matter what the hell you dropping, I don't care if you dropping sneaker videos, makeup tutorials, you dropping blogs, consistent. Be consistent, get you a upload, get you a upload goal, or get you an upload schedule and stick to it because people love consistency and they love when you drop shit when you say you're gonna drop it you know what I'm saying so it's just a dedication thing and consistency drop stuff that you like to drop don't do videos just because somebody else doing it do it because you actually want to do that if you are trying to be yourself and you're lost whether you're lost in yourself you're lost in family you lost in what everybody gonna think at the end of the day you got to worry about your happiness Self-happiness means everything. If you're not happy, you're going to lead yourself into depression. And it's hard to get out the dark. It's hard when you're in that dark place. It's like you're in a sunken moment. I felt that moment many times. Don't get yourself in that place. It's, it's, it's better to be happy than to be in a dark spot because you're trying to make others happy. Okay, so basically, would I rather have more followers on my social media platform or would I rather have hella cash or, you know what I'm saying, million plus dollars? If we being realistic, man, and adults here, and I'm taking that money, bruh. I mean, social media nice though, because it could definitely lead to like a hella money and hella more opportunities. It's just depending on, it depends on where I'm at in my life if they get offered to me, you know what I'm saying? The pros and cons of being famous slash popular on social media. The pros is, you know what I'm saying, you get a lot of love, you get a lot of support, 
you get you get shit for free you get a whole bunch of opportunities from different things acting music so it's it's so much that you can do with having followers but the cons to that shit is most of the time all these big people y'all see they be loners man because you can't trust nobody around you because everybody want this everybody want clout a lot of cons to that shit is hate you get a lot of hate man i tell people don't get stuck in their comments you know what i'm saying because that shit can fuck with your head a lot especially when you especially when you down and out you start thinking about everything that you know what i'm saying people saying you like damn that shit that shit actually may be true you start you start thinking too much so i tell people stay out the comments and you know Try to stay away from all the negative energy and negative vibes on the social media because, as y'all can see, it's a lot of trolls on the internet. I'm Lil Perfect. I'm rocking with All Urban Central.